So we're going to be looking at the last chapter of Ephesians, and we're not going to focus on the whole chapter, but we're going to be looking at the armor of God section. This is going to be starting in verse 10. So I'm going to read from there. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against the evil spirits in the heavenly places. Uh, so right off the bat here, Paul is just helping us to see where the fight's at, and he's helping us to get focused on the right thing, to not be focused on the things of this world that are going on, um, not against those powers, but against the powers of the things that we can't see. So he kind of directs our attention and he reveals who the real enemy is. Uh, right after that, he goes on to say, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Uh, so after Paul makes this statement, he starts to name these different parts of armor. It's almost like a soldier um, being equipped for battle, but these aren't actual pieces of armor, obviously, that we're supposed to be carrying around. Um, Paul names what these each piece is representing. So he gives us the helmet, he gives us the breastplate, he gives us the belt, he gives us the shoes, um, the, the shield and the sword. And each of these things represent, like I said, something very specific. So the, the helmet represents our salvation. Um, the breastplate represents righteousness. Um, the belt is truth. Uh, the shoes will be peace. The shield is our faith. And the sword is the word of God. And so we complete this um, set of armor. When I look at this I, and I think, man, this is, this is revealing Jesus. Um, I see Jesus in all of these different pieces of armor. Um, Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. So I see truth in that. He was the righteous one, the only one who lived a truly righteous life. Um, he was the Prince of Peace. Um, also, it talks about in Scripture, he was the way, uh, he made a way where there was no way. So he brought us to faith. Um, he also was the Lamb of God. Um, so we have salvation through the sacrifice. And he also is revealed in scripture as the word of God. So we see um, Jesus um, giving us these gifts as salvation and faith in the word of God, but also his character and who he really was in truth and righteousness and peace. So we are being equipped um, to model Jesus and to embrace what he's given us. And then lastly, after we've, we've been revealed who the real enemy is, we've also been equipped fully in this spiritual armor um, but now Paul doesn't leave us just standing around with nothing to do, waiting for an attack. He commissions us forward and he does this through prayer. And he tells us how to pray even in this scripture. He gives us the when, the how, and the whom. And the when is very simple. The when is at all times. So just like a Jesus would um, leave his disciples a lot of times and go spend time with his father praying, we are to do the same thing. We are to take time out of our busy schedule uh, to just spend time with, with uh, God. And then also the how is in the spirit. And this is just us praying uh, for God's will to be done. Um, just like in the Lord's prayer. So we are to focus on God's will um, happening in our lives and around us. And then lastly, the whom is for the saints. Paul names the saints. This is who we should be praying for. And this is just our brothers and sisters in Christ who are also in this fight with us. And so when we read all this, even though we live in challenging times, um, it's, it's easy for us to see that God has made a way for us to stand firm in him, and he's also given us a way to move forward. <laughs>